What up, what up? Wimbush here. And today I'm excited to show you guys Magic Bullet looks running natively inside of Unreal Engine. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Now, if you either have the Max on One or the Red Giant Complete Package, then you have this plugin already. It's available today. So make sure you go to your installer, just update it, and then it'll be inside of Unreal Engine. And the other thing that you want to make sure that you have is Unreal Engine version 4.27. This is the latest, most stable version of Unreal. And this is the version that Magic Bullet looks works inside. So let me close this out because I have Unreal already opened right here. So this is a project that I did for Maker's Place. I did it inside of Cinema. I brought it into Unreal Engine. You can see if I play it out, I have fluid simulations. If you watch my tutorial that I did for Maxon last month, I showed you exactly how to build something similar like this out. But let's say that, okay, I have my scene in here. I'm happy with how everything looks. And now I want to add Magic Bullet inside of here instead of After Effects. And so in order to do that, you want to make sure you come up to settings, come down to plugins, and I'm going to type magic here inside the search bar. And you just want to make sure that it's enabled. Every time I've opened up Unreal, this has been enabled, but you just want to make sure. And so if it's not enabled, you want to click that, and then it's going to make you restart Unreal, which only takes a few moments there. And so we're good to go there. So now what I want to do is I want to apply it so that when I render this out inside of my sequencer, it's going to render out with the magic bullet looks applied to it. And so in order to do that, we're going to have to add the magic bullet actor to our scene. And so if I come over here to my place actors, I'm just going to come over here and search for magic. And it should be at the very top here. So magic bullet looks volume. And this looks very familiar because it's actually using a post press volume if you're familiar with this workflow. So I'm just going to click and drag this into my scene here. And now I have it inside of my raw outliner on the right hand side. I usually like coming down to my transform tools and I'm going to hit this yellow arrow just to zero everything out. And then right here where I have this little lock here, I'm going to click on that because I'm going to take the scale and I'm going to raise it up by like 10. And if I come out of my camera view and I kind of just look at my scene as a whole, I want to make sure that this box is engulfing my entire scene because we want to make sure our camera is inside of this volume box in order to take advantage of magic bullet looks. So I'm just going to drag this up a tiny bit. Let me see. So it looks like it should be engulfing my entire scene like so. So somewhere around there looks good. So I'm going to come back down here to my sequencer, hit the camera button to get back into my camera view. And now we're ready to start adding some of these parameters. And so if you see over here on my right hand side, you can already see that we have a tab for magic bullet looks. But before I open magic bullet looks, I want to run through here and put some of these other attributes on. So I'm going to click down on lens first. Then I'm going to click on bloom. I'm just going to add some of these just to add some bloom and lens flares to my scene here. Nothing too crazy. Then if I come down here to exposure, if you follow any of my tutorials or even of my course on modegraph.com in the past, this should all look familiar to you. These are usually the settings that I use. So I come down to exposure and hit zero. And when I say the settings that I use, if you look right here, this is actually using a post process volume. So that's why we have all the same attributes in here. The only thing that's different is it added magic bullet looks to it now. And so I'm going to come back down here to min and max. I'm going to make these about one each just so our exposure stays at the same level. And I think that's all I'm going to do for that because I want to start getting into magic bullet looks. So I'm going to pull the lens up and I'm going to come back down to magic bullet looks right here. And I want to click on open magic bullet looks right here. And this should open up a window for us. That's going to look very familiar to you guys. And here we go. And so this is what opens up first. And then you'll see over here, it takes a second to load up, but this is the window that we're used to. So whether you use like Premiere or After Effects or Blackmagic Resolve, this interface should look very familiar to you. If you look over here on your left-hand side, you have all your different looks. You can even make custom looks down here as so. So if I come over here to like Blockbuster and I start clicking around, you can see that it's adding these different color, you know, these different color attributes into here, which is really cool. And we also have our full controls over here on the right hand side. So if we want to mess around with any of these controls as well, you're able to do so in which 
this is really really cool like i'm not really a colorist at all but magic bullet looks makes it extremely easy to do this the only other way to do this before was to you know go to the marketplace maybe download like a let's pack and bring it into here and then go inside your post process volume mess around with the different color wheels in there as well but this i like this setup a lot better because it's a lot more intuitive it's a lot cleaner interface and it's very familiar since i'm an after effects user for many many years and so I'm just going to come over here and let's do something like crazy. Let's pick like a crazy color so we can see it inside of our viewport and how it looks. So let's go with this right here. Let's say like this purple one. So I'm just going to click the check mark here and you can see that and then golf my entire scene here. And if I go back to the beginning and I start playing this through, let me just drag this through. It's a little bit crazy because it's like ultra purple, but you can see that it's actually playing through with our sequence here. And then let's say you're not happy with this look and you want to start back by default. All you have to do is come right here and hit flush looks. And then it's going to say, are you sure? Because it's going to reset your magic bullet looks. All you do is click yes. And you're back to where you was before. And what's cool is all it did was reset the magic bullet looks to default. So all your other settings that I did in here for the lens flares and everything like that, that all stayed in there. And so if I come back to my open magic bullet looks, I'm going to apply something that looks a little bit better. So maybe let's come over to cool. Let's do something like uh, maybe this one right here, Polaris. So that looks pretty cool right there. So I'm going to click the check mark. Actually, let me pick a different one. That one's a little bit too heavy there. So let me do classic Neo. Something like that looks pretty flavorful. So let's say that I'm happy with this right here and I'm ready to render it out. So I don't want to render out this entire sequence. Maybe let me just do a couple of frames here to show you guys. So let me drag this over like so. Okay, so I have a couple of frames in here. I can even do less than that. Okay, so let's say that I'm happy with how this is right here. I'm going to click on the save file right here. And then I'm going to click on this little icon right here. But before I do that, I want to make sure that I come down here to movie scene capture, which is the legacy way of rendering. This is version one. So this is the way that we do it for now. I know they're going to continue to update this and it's going to be ready for the movie render queue at some point. But for now, we're going to render it out with this method right here. So I'm going to click on this little clipboard here and this brings up our movie render settings. So I could keep it as a JPEG right here. Um, let me come down. Yeah, so 1920 by 1920 is how I had it. And then let me just put this on my desktop. So I have a render folder here. I'm going to click select folder. And let's say that I'm happy with how everything is in here. So I'm just going to click on capture movie. It's going to ask me to save everything first, which I'm going to do. And so now we can see it rendering inside this little window right here. And it's showing us it's capturing the footage down the lower right hand side. So once this is done, I'm going to open up the folder. It rendered out an image sequence. So let me come back to my Windows Explorer, come to my desktop, my render folder, and there we go. So we have it all with the Magic Bullet looks applied to it already. And like if you didn't really want to, if you want to do all your color correcting inside of Unreal Engine, we don't have to go outside and use like a colorist like, you know, Blackmagic Resolve or even After Effects or something like that. Now we have the power of Magic Bullet looks inside of Unreal Engine. So this little short demo right here showed you how you can render out Magic Bullet looks using Unreal Engine, but that's not even the coolest thing about it because Unreal Engine is a game engine. We can make interactive experiences. We could do VR experiences. We can make video games. And I just happen to have my trusty Xbox controller here. So let me show you an interactive experience running in real time time at magic bullet looks so again i have unreal engine version 4.27 opened up i have a scene in here that's created for an interactive experience basically just a scene you know reminiscent of like zelda something like that and i'm going to have my unreal engine character run around inside of the scene and i'm going to show you some cool things that we can do with magic bullet looks so the first thing that we could do is we can actually have magic bullet looks take over our viewport here in order to do that i'm going to come down here to where my content browser is I'm going to click on the uppermost level here and then i'm just going to right click in here and then i'm going to come over here to where it says miscellaneous and right here we see magic bullet looks so i'm going to click on that right there and there we go so i'm going to double click on this and this is going to open up magic bullet looks for us in which we should be familiar with this screen we just looked at it not too long ago so we have all of our cool different you know color spaces in here let me see maybe you want to do something warm 
you want to do uh, let's see maybe let's do an enhancement so it kind of looks like zelda ish let me see I'm trying to find a cool one in here for you guys so i guess for this example maybe we'll do something actually let me do it crazy so you guys can see it running inside the viewport so let's go with this like something inverted the Ginza one right here that looks pretty cool so i'm going to click on that i'm going to apply it and you see that it's not showing up in here and so right here when i have my red giant icon i'm going to actually right click this and then i'm just going to click on save and then right here instead of our viewport where it says lit i'm going to click on this and i'm going to come down here to the bottom where it says magic bullet looks i'm going to enable the display and then i'm going to come right here to where it says select the mlb asset and i'm going to select the one that i have right here so i'm going to select this here and then if i click in my viewport it should engulf our entire scene and which it does right now so i'm just moving around my viewport right now using a WASD keys as if I'm playing like, you know, first person shooter and I'm just flying around my scene. Magic bullet looks is just taking over my entire viewport. And even if I click on play, I'm going to pull up my Xbox controller here. So I have it right here. I'm just going to control my character. I'm running around the scene. Everything's running in real time. We don't have any delays or anything. Actually, let me pull up my frame rates here. So if I come over here, I'm going to click on show FPS. You can see I have my FPS stats running right here. It's running anywhere around 60 or above. So that's 60 frames per second. I'm going to click on play. And here we are. So I'm running in here. We have some dynamic buoyancy inside the water there going. And our frame rate is not taking a hit at all. So, I mean, this is crazy. We have our grass, you know, it has some wind dynamics on it. The trees have wind dynamics. We have particles for like the fireflies and everything. If I come over here, you can see like the waterfall in the background there. I could jump inside the water. There we have like the cool watery effect and everything happening in there. And we're not taking a hit to our frame rates at all. And so there's another cool thing that we can actually do at Magic Bullet Looks that I'm going to show you now as well. So let me hit escape on here. And I'm actually going to delete this right here. And then we're going to come back to lit. I'm just going to turn it off inside of my display because I'm going to use Magic Bullet Looks as a volume now. So if anybody out there plays any type of video game, especially like the Far Cry games, you'll notice that, you know, like if you go into like a fiery area, how like the whole entire environment just kind of changes, like the color space will change. It will get kind of foggy. And there's a way that we could do that with Magic Bullet Looks. So I'm going to make a volume. I'm going to have my character step into it and it's going to change the complete color space of just that area. So a cool place that we could probably place this will be probably inside the water. So let me come over here to like my dock where we have the boats and everything. And let me add the volume right here. So same thing as we did before. I'm going to come over to my place actors. I'm going to type in magic. And then I'm going to add the magic bullet looks volume into my scene here. And if I come down here to my transform, I can make it a little bit larger. So let me see. I'm going to click on the lock let's say three and I want to put it in a good area. So like once we hit the water, that's where we're going to actually have it happen at. So let me actually make this four and we'll just have to remember it's over here by the dock. And so I'm going to come over here and let's open up our magic bullet display down here. So I'm going to open up magic bullet looks. And then let's say when we go into the water, we're probably going to want it to be blue. So let's see if we can find one that's going to change it to like a bluish hue here. So maybe something like that, maybe. All right. So actually that looks cool there, but let me actually come over back to Ginza. Let me just make this more of like a bluish persuasion, maybe. So bring these down. So something like that might look cool because we're underwater. So I'm just going to play with these sliders until I find something cool. So let's say we're good with that. So I'm going to click play here and then I'm going to come back to my world outliner. I'm just going to move this over a little bit and I'm going to click on play again. And then I'm going to pick up my Xbox controller, click on here. You can see my frame rates at 120 now. I'm not sure what happened, but yeah, that's cool. We're getting higher frame rates. So if I run in here, you can see there we go. So I'm going inside the water. It's changing the color space. 
And that's because it's only happening within that volume. So that's where I set it at. And that's something cool. Like if you're making an interactive experience, as soon as you run into that volume, you can completely change the dynamic of what it looks like, which is really fresh in itself. So if I hit escape on here and you can actually see it in the viewport, like if you want to test it out, I see how my volume box right there. If I slowly move into here, like so. So now you see it's turning purple. I'm going outside the volume box and we're changing it back to a regular color space. So this has like a whole plethora of dynamics that we could just play around with. I mean, the possibilities are endless. We could create interactive experiences. We could do rendering. I mean, we could do all types of stuff with this and with Magic Boy, it looks, it makes it even easier to make something really cool and dynamic. So I'm very happy that Red Giant and Maxon implemented this in the Unreal Engine. And I can't wait to see how much further this goes. So hopefully you guys are excited as I am. This is really cool. I love seeing this type of stuff inside of Unreal Engine as I like doing interactive experiences along with motion graphics. So having the tools that I'm familiar with already implement it into unreal engine it only makes sense and it makes my life a lot easier so for you guys out there if you have the red giant subscription or the max on one subscription unreal engine free there's no reason why you shouldn't go in here and play around with it leave us a comment down below let us know what kind of features you would like to see here in the future and once again my name is jonathan wimbush you can see more tutorials like this on my youtube channel youtube.com slash jonathan wimbush and until next time stay fresh keep creating and i see you guys in the next video i see you soon take Take care.